In this video, we're going to talk about two conditions called nearsightedness. Or a different word for nearsightedness is myopia. So that's one condition we're going to talk about, and the other one is farsightedness. And another word for farsightedness is hyperopia. So those are the two conditions we're going to talk about. And specifically, in terms of what we are going to talk about, we are going to compare them. So Doppon says distinguish, which means we need to tell the difference between myopia and hyperopia. And also we need to outline how technology can be used to correct these conditions. Both these conditions are often genetic, but we can use either lenses or corrective surgery to change this back to, back to the way it should be. Right? But we're going to talk about those as well. So first, the distinguishing, so the difference between the two. So first of all, farsightedness means that we can see clearly from far away, but from near, we get a blurry image. So this girl, if we have farsightedness or hyperopia, that person would see this girl clearly because she's far away, but the girl close by would be blurry because she's nearby, right? So nearby vision would be blurry, far vision would be clear. Whereas nearsightedness would be the opposite. The people who are nearsighted, they can see clearly if things are clear uh, nearby, which means that this girl would be clear. She could see it wouldn't be blurry for a nearsighted person, whereas the farsighted uh, the person is far away, the girl is far away. Someone's got myopia or nearsightedness, this girl would be blurry, right? So, um, for someone who's got farsightedness, far girl would be clear, near girl would be blurry, and it's opposite for someone who's got nearsightedness or, or myopia, the close girl would be clear, but the far girl would be blurry. That's what you should know. First of all, you should know the difference between hypopia and myopia in terms of um, what how your vision is, right? That's one thing. You should also know the difference in terms of what, how it actually happens, and how this actually occurs. Remember, normally we've got light which enters the cornea and then enters the lens, and it's, it's getting bent to make sure it hits the back of the eye. And the back of the eye is usually this point, which is the retina. So the focal point, the point where all of these light rays meet, is the retina. And that's normal vision. But now, when it comes to nearsighted, so this is myopia. In myopia, we have a problem because something has gone wrong. The lens might be different, the cornea might be different, the, the eyeball might be different. But what's happening is you can see the lights entering, but they are meeting a bit too far in front. Right? So they're meeting here. And as opposed to they're not meeting there, they're meant to be he meeting here, but they're meeting too far in front. So that's the condition called myopia. If your focal point the focal point is too far in front of the usual retina that's meant to hit, whereas obviously hypopia would be the opposite. So in the hypopia, we have the focal points, so lights being, being bent here, but then it is meeting too far behind, so it's meeting here. So in hypopia, we've got the focal point behind the retina. So it's meant to be here usually, but it's behind the retina, right? So in myopia, it's too far in front. So the focal point is in front. And in hypopia, it's too far back. I'm talking about the focal point here. The point where all of these actual points meet. And so that's one thing you should also know. That's helping you distinguish between the two. Last thing you should know is you should kind of remember this table. You don't need to go through each and explain what I'm going to explain, but you just need to remember the difference between myopia and hypopia in terms of shape of the eyeball, refraction power of cornea, and the shape of the lens. First of all, the shape of the eyeball. So the shape can either be normal, elongated, which means it's, it's a bit too long, elongated means long, or round and small. And so basically norm, normal would be this, and what's going to happen is you're going to have your light coming in, it's going to refract and hit that back of the eye, the eye, the retina, which is where it's meant to be hit. But you can imagine if you've got an elongated um, eyeball, what you're going to have, what you're going to have happen is that the light comes in, everything's still the same. The light still hits the same spot as it did beforehand, but because the eyeball is longer, the retina is now not there anymore, but the, it's going to be behind. So even though everything is just as it was beforehand, because the retina is further behind it because the eyeball is elongated, you're going to have myopia. You're going to have the focal point being too far in front. Right? So we've got shape of the eyeball being elongated, 
for myopia and it'll be the exact opposite for hypopia. So if it's small and too round, then you might get hypopia, right? which means the yeah, focal point would be in the back. You don't need to remember, you don't need to explain these bits, just remember this table more or less, the difference between the two. Uh, the refractive power of cornea, the refractive power of the cornea, so if you've got light coming in, usually you've got refraction happening, and that means you've got it hitting the spot where it's meant to happen, but it can either be too little or too much. If the refractive power of the lens of the cornea, sorry, is too little, so we've got refractive power being too little, which means there's not enough bending happening, then we get myopia, which means we've got the point being too far in front, and if we have too much. Bending happening at the cornea, right? the cornea was at the front part of the eye, this part here. So if there's too much bending happening, we've got hypopia. If there's not enough bending happening, we've got myopia. In terms of shape of the lens, if we have, for example, parallel light coming, so this will be distant, a distant object, which means parallel light, parallel light coming in, and this is the relaxed state. Remember, far vision, we've got a relaxed state. So usually light would bend, it will bend enough to make sure we've got it hitting the focal point. But if we have a lens which is too round in the relaxed state, remember it's meant to be flat in the relaxed state, but if it's too round, what that will mean is the bending will be too extreme, will be too powerful in the bending, which means the actual focal point will be too far in front. So shape of the lens, if we have a too rounded lens in the relaxed state, that will give us myopia, which means the focal point will be too far in front, too rounded in relaxed state, whereas if we have a too flat in the contracted stage, remember contracted stage is meant to be really round, so now we've got a closed object, which means we've got these light parallel, uh, these lights coming from all different directions. We're meant to have lots of refractive power to make sure we, we bring it closer, we bring all the lights together, light rays together on this point here, the focal point, because the lens is flat, it doesn't have as much refractive power, which means it can't bend it too much, which means it'll hit on the back as opposed to where it's meant to be hitting. So it's hitting too far behind, and that's what we call hyperopia, right? So if we have a too flat shape of the lens in the contracted stage, which is usually when it comes to near vision, then we have hyperopia. Right, so too round in relaxed state, in relaxed state it's myopia, too flat in the contracted stage would be hypopia. So these are the ones you should remember. So again, I'll go over this again, what you need to remember. You need to remember the definition of hypopia and myopia. So nearsightedness means you can see from things from near clearly, but from far away blurry. Farsightedness means you can see things from far clear, but from near blurry. Um, then you need to know this, you need to know the focal point in myopia is too far in front, the focal point in hyopia is too far in behind, and you should remember, remember this table as well, the difference between the two in terms of shape of the eyeball, refractive power of the cornea, and shape of the lens. And that was the first part, distinguish between, I'm quickly going to go over the other part as well, so the corrective, to outline how technology can be used to correct these techniques, we can use different types of technologies, either special glasses or spectacles, so spectacles or glasses is one of them. We can use contact lenses, special contact lenses, or laser surgery. I'm going to quickly go over each of these. So the spectacles or glasses, what happens here is if we have, this is myopia, right? So in the normal eye, the myopia eye, it's meant to hit here, but it's hitting too far in front, that's myopia. But then they get these glasses, these are concave lenses, which means concave means it will go like that, like a bowl. And this is, you can see two of these concave discs make up this glass. What this means, this will incre uh, decrease the, so it will decrease the refractive power, which means it will not make them bend as much. Right, so usually they bend too early, but now it will bend slightly less. So you can see it will hit now the back of the eye. So now it's been corrected. So beforehand we've hit it too far in front. Now with these glasses that make the bending a bit weaker, refractive power a bit less, 
we hit it in the back of the eye and everything's perfect. Right? So we can use these glasses, these concave lenses, um, the, gl the glasses of concave lenses for people who have myopia. And people who have hypopia have the opposite problem. Here we have, uh, we have the actual, we don't have enough refractive power. It's hitting too far behind. It's meant to be hitting here. It's meant to be hitting here. This is where it wants to hit, right on the retina, but it's hitting too far behind, it's hitting here. So what we can do is we can have these convex lenses. So we can have glasses with convex lenses. What this does is it increases the refractive power of the whole system, which means now it will converge on the focal point on the retina as opposed to behind. Right, so that's the spectacles of glasses. Same with the, the contact lenses. I don't have to go for the mechanism because it's basically the same mechanism. Just you have lenses, contact lenses, as opposed to glasses. Um, just like people can have glasses or lenses with normal eyes, um, normal glasses or lenses, normal whatever. Right, I'm confusing myself now. Just moving on. Um, so those, yeah, glasses or, or or contact lenses is pretty straightforward. Don't even need to know this part. You can remember maybe the convex and concave lenses that make up the glasses. Basically, if we put on these glasses, everything will be corrected. And the other one was the, was the laser surgery. So remember, we said that the cornea can either be too powerful or not powerful enough. And what laser surgery does, it will actually change the shape. So it will change the shape of the cornea. And thereby, if it's not powerful enough, it will make it more powerful. If it's too powerful, it will make it less powerful. So whatever the problem, this laser surgery will correct that problem. Right? So these are three technologies can be used to more or less remove um, the myopia or hypopia. Remember the spectacle or glasses. For myopia, we have these concave lenses which make which decrease refractive power. For hypopia, we have these convex lenses which increase refractive power. But both of them make sure that the actual light hits the back of the eye on the retina, as opposed to too far in front in myopia or too far behind in terms of hypopia. Then we have contact lenses, which work the same way, just not glasses, you just got to put lenses on instead. And we've got laser surgery, what that does, it changes the shape of the retina. Uh, sorry, not the retina, but the cornea. The cornea. It's the front part of the eye here. And that's done to make sure that it can either make it stronger or weaker, depending on the condition itself. Right, that's also what you need to know for the stop point. How these technologies can be used to correct the condition. I hope that was useful.